Scott. Scott. That's why. Uh, that's why I was a little distracted. All right, ex 49er general manager Scott McLuhan joining us on ninety five seven. The game. Hey Scott, how you doing, man? Thanks for joining us. I'm doing excellent, guys. How you guys doing? All We're right. doing well. The, the reason we wanted to grab you was because the 49ers recently hired Frank Gore, a guy you're very familiar with, um, into their front office. And and uh, I'd love for some to get some insight from you on on Frank. And and the first thing I'm going to ask you is, you know, a lot of a lot of great players in the league. What t- tell me something about Frank Gore that that makes made a team want to hire him? into their front office because it doesn't sound like it's a it's a figurehead job it sounds like he's going to be scouting and he's going to try to learn the the front office and and, and ascend yeah I, I i can tell you this through and through and, and, and one of the reasons i drafted him or we drafted him at the time with the 49ers is he's a football guy he is a football junkie he lives it lives it every day i talked to him probably once a week for the last 10 years mm. and since he's been retired it's just like, I got to get back in football. I got to get back in football. I need it. I need it. I need it. You know, and he's got some plan for Southern Miss, who's going to be a senior this year running back. That's a good player, a good prospect. He'll draft it. But he just, he's all football. And that's why he, he's a player, and that's why he lasted so long. And he obviously he took care of himself. It's just, he lives and breathes football. And he's a 49er through and through, 100%. Scott, how much credit does Jed York get for, for, for having this set up? I know a lot of times we hear about these teams are family, but going to get one of their guys, you know, one of their staples uh, at the running back position to bring them back in this capacity, to me that's that's all good. That means business is good. What what do you say to that? Uh, yeah, I'm telling you, Jed, the, the Barlow York family are phenomenal. Mm. You know what? And they, they take care of their own no matter what. And the thing about Frank, he took care of the 49ers for a long time. And we have some tough teams now. I mean, tough records, you know, all that. And he fought and fought and fought and kept fighting. And with Jed doing this for him proves that that's loyalty. And that's why the 49ers are so legit. And that's why they've been so legit over the years in the history. It's because it's taking care of your own, the ones that take care of you. Mm. And there's nobody better than Frank to take care of, in my opinion, because he gave his heart and soul to that organization. And he is, I'm telling you, he'll be good for the organization and your organization will be better because of him being there. I guarantee it. Scott McLuhan joining us on 95-7 The Game, former San Francisco 49er and Washington football team general manager. Uh, he was also a senior personnel executive for the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, Scott, I know uh, my partner wants to talk to you a little bit about the running back position and, and kind of what's going on there uh, in, in today's NFL. Uh, I, I do want to ask you about the 49ers, though, and, and their quarterback situation. Uh, out here, as you know, this is a passionate fan base, particularly when it comes to, to quarterbacks. And how, if you're an outsider, and I know you're not, but they've got four quarterbacks in camp. The fourth, uh, number four is getting snaps. Purdy's been named at right now the leader in the clubhouse. How, if you were just looking at the 49ers quarterback situation in training camp, what sticks out to you right now? I think they have a lot of talent. They have a lot of different kind of talent with each guy. Um, you have some young, you have some very athletic, you have some pocket guys. I think what, what's unique to the situation is that they, they're not in a panic at all. Um, now, they have to make the right decision. Of course they will. They always do. Um, but it's, it's, it's interesting. It's very interesting because I'm a big Trey Lance fan coming out. You know, I know he didn't play a lot in college. I get that and all that. But just the upside, the ceiling was so freaking high. And it still is. It's still really, really high. And I know Purdy. I, I, I sat at Purdy three years in a row, as a matter of fact. He was at Iowa State for like seven years, I think, <laughs> whatever right. it was. But totally different players, but then one's cerebral and one's a big-time athlete. So can you mesh and try to find what's the best fit for what the system is? And, of course, Kyle knows that. I mean, and that's why he's been successful. And he will keep being successful with quarterback. But it's it, it's interesting because it's I first walked into Washington. We had RG three and we had Kirk Cousins, and you know a big you know RG was coming off the, the the knee stuff and all that and second knee injury and it was uh, it was unique because I was an outsider coming in walking in, and of course we named Kirk the uh, starter, you know, in a winning division that year. But it was it was it was a tough decision and it affects you know not just coaches and the player itself, but families, you know, you're starting, you're not a starter, or you can get traded. 
You know, are you on the trade bubble? That type? That's never a good feeling for a player, ever. You know, but they have a situation, and it's a good situation, that they can get value no matter what, one way or the other, if they want to move one, if to say that. Or you want to keep the rookie contract, you know, Trey, which is cheap, and keep him around knowing that he's going to need the backup. So it, 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 it's an interesting thing. As a GM, it's really, really tough. But you just try to do what's best for the team, the organization, not just the individual. And But having quarterbacks that you like is a really good problem to have in the NFL. Really good. Yeah, I agree with you, Scott. Last week, my partner was worried about me. He always has my back. I came in, and out of nowhere, I just went in and said the NFL should be ashamed at how they're treating running backs. And Frank Gore comes to mind. He get, he's given the Niners his all. Uh, Tony Dorsett, Marcus Allen, Roger Craig. How could there any position in the NFL? Yeah, how could any position in the NFL, Scott, all of a sudden be taken advantage of? Where these guys are risking their 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 their, their lives every Sunday? They're getting carries, they get used up, and then you can get franchise back to back. So I was so mad, but then I thought to myself, Scott, well, they they did a new CBA. They, they, the, the fine print was there. Why didn't they do anything? So I say all that to ask you, what are your thoughts on the current running backs and how they're getting treated? And is it a thing to you? Because I, I just think it's unfair. Tell you, off the get-go, I really don't understand why. Because I look at any position. I, I understand left tackles, corners, pass rushers, quarterbacks. I understand. Everybody says that's important. No. Every player on your team's important. All 11 and mm. 11 and 11. Special mm. teams, offense and defense are very, very important. And if they're a talented player and they help you win games on Sunday, you pay them, plain and simple. It, it, I, I don't get it. I, I redid Frank twice, just so you know. Wow. Man. Twice. It, it, I had to wait after the third year to, re, to do the first one, and but I, I did as soon as I could. I did the same thing with Patrick Willis, Joe Staley, Sean Goldson, all mm. them cats. I, I did the same thing with all of them. But the running back is vital, in my opinion. Oh, vital. Wow. You, you go back and watch the Super Bowls, a lot of teams win games on Super Bowls because of the running backs, because of the offensive line, you know. And the quarterback's great. Don't get me wrong. I've been lucky. I've been around Favre. I've been around Russell Wilson, Alex Smith, all these cats. It's awesome. But that running back takes so much pressure off the quarterback, it's not even fun. I would, if, if I had a top five running back on my team, I'd pay him. Like it is Frank. I, I, I read them twice, and everybody's like, you're crazy. Why are you doing that to running back? They only last three years. That's, I, don't, I, I know this. I see him every day. I know exactly who he is and what he is and how he prepares himself in the offseason. And I know on Sundays, we're going to win. He's going to be a big part of it. And there's not enough money out there to win on Sundays, I'm telling you. You want to get the Super Bowl, you want a world championship, you, you, you need a good back. You need a good back. Scott McLuhan joining us on 95.7, the game former 49ers general manager. Uh, a few years back, the Niners obviously moved up in the draft to get to get Trey Lance. Uh, they, they gave up three first-rounders and, and got one back to, to draft him. Uh, you've been a part of front offices. When when you do that, when you give up that kind of capital for a, a quarterback or any player, that's going to be part of the narrative around it. So, can you give us some kind of insight on, like, how much hand wringing is done in a front office, and how much discussion and disagreement and give and take is there, or was there? Do you think? Before the 49ers said, you know what, we're going to do it. We're going to move two first to get Trey Lance. Like, how much goes into that decision? A lot. A lot. And it's not just GM. It's not directors. It's not coaches. It's ownership. It's everybody. Hmm. Um, because that affects the franchise for the future. Because those those rookie contracts are so important going forward. You want those first-rounders and all that. But also, they did it for a reason. They did it for a reason because they saw something. You know, and I respect that. You know, and you got conviction, go do it. You know, easily, I could have drafted Aaron Rodgers. He would have been the easy pick for me. I took Alex Smith because I saw the ceiling. I saw the person. I saw the youthness in him, in the youngness in him, what he had going forward. And, you know, looking back, of course, maybe I made a bad decision. I don't think so. I think, you know what, as a coach and as a scout, you know, my directors talking to him, we made the right decision because we all agreed upon it. You know, we go down together, we survive together. And, and, and that's what they're doing in San Fran. And I think that's really, really cool. I think with the head coach and GM and their relationship and with the ownership, I think that's why they're good. That's why you guys are going to be good going forward, you know. And, and it's, 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 it's tough, but, and it's not an exact science at all, 
but you still get gut feelings. You get personalities. You get what's inside them, you know, and all of a sudden you start feeling that. You know, you realize, wow, this guy could be, well, he could be this. He could be even a step up or another step up. And you, you start getting that point. You're like, well, hell yeah, it's worth it. I mean, it's a quarterback, you know. So I personally think Trey Lance is going to be a damn good quarterback in the NFL. Really good. Really good. There, somewhere else, I have no idea. No one knows that. But he's a football player, and he's got traits that you look for in a young guy. He has all of them. That's interesting, Scott. Really interesting. Let me ask you this, because my partner last year, we talked about when Trey Lance uh, was named starter and the dynamic of the locker room. From your experience, how much does a player's voice, how much input does that carry? And does a good head coach like Kyle, you know, speak to the vets about what decision he's possibly making with the quarterback position? Well, I can tell you this. I, I was very lucky to be around Mike Holmgren for half my career. You know, I was in Green Bay when I was in Seattle. And uh, it matters a lot. The quarterback and the personality and the leadership and the trust and the honesty in knowing that he walks in the building, that the people look at him and they feel comfortable with him being a starting quarterback. That's gigantic. And it, it, it's hard to get, you know. And the good thing with Brock, he got it last year. When he came in out of nowhere, okay, all he did is win. You know, and all of a sudden players are like, okay, he's helping me take care of my family. We're winning. We're going to playoffs. I'm getting more money because of him. That's, that's gigantic. But also, you identify the young talent, too, because all football players know football players, the good ones. They know each other. And they, I, they identify the same traits that I look for. And once they get that respect from them, then it's like, wow, okay, well, Brock's really, really, really good. You know, and he's doing this for us, and we're winning. That's awesome. But Trey's, wow, Trey could be this guy. But he hasn't proved that yet. You know, so I think with the players, and I think with the respect in the locker room, is production on the field on Sundays. That's what makes you and that doesn't make you. Fourth quarter, third and eighth, who completes the pass? How does he do it? Or who, who runs the ball? How does he do it? They help you win games. Now you start rolling with respect, and then you got him. And I think Brock's proved who he is and what he is, and I think that's great for him. That's great for the organization. Um, Trey hasn't yet, but I think he will. I really do. Scott McLuhan joining us on 95.7 The Game. Why do you think the 49ers brought Sam Darnold in here? Because he's a really good guy and he's got a lot of talent. <laughs> I've been around him. I know Sam. Well, yeah, I mean, but he's got a reputation that, that's not the greatest among fans. I know that's not the be-all and end-all. Uh, but when you saw the 49ers but, sign Sam Darnold, you said to yourself what? I said they signed somewhat a veteran that's been through a lot of adversity that has talent that Kyle can get out of him. Kyle can do this. He's a he, with Brock. Sam has a lot of talent, but the thing about him is he's a great teammate. I'll never forget Frank Gore, Jets. He's with, he's with Sam. Right. He says, I'll tell you what, Scott. He says, everybody's knocking him. Everybody's killing him. He says, I, I don't this. He's the toughest son of a gun that comes in our locker room, and he works his tail off every single day, and everybody respects him. Right there is enough. Well, why not sign him? You know, <laughs> what are you going to lose? And that's Frank telling me that. And, that, and this is three, four years ago, whatever it was, when right. he was with the Jets. And, no, he just said, this, this guy's one of us. He's a football guy. He's a football player. Now, that's a hell of a sign. I'm telling you, you might need him at some point. You never know. <laughs> yeah. 100% might need him. No doubt. Scott, let me ask you this, because my partner and I go back and forth with Kyle Shanahan. I recognize he's a almost genius offensive play caller and play designer, and he's not working with Joe Montana thus far at the quarterback position, but yet they've been in the NFC Championship and Super Bowls, as you know. But I'm asking, man, when's it going to come for Kyle? My partner's like, it's good for business. You know, he wants to win, but where are you at on the Kyle Shanahan kind of kicking that door in. And am I off base to just kind of say, you know what, they've been close. When is it going to happen, or do I need to chill? You, you need to chill. You need to chill because, you know Thank what, his father wants to do stuff. And you <laughs> know what, his father ends up being what? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yep. Incredible. No, 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 no. It's That organization, your guys' organization, is going the right direction, 100%. And you know what? It's tough to win the Super Bowl, as you guys are well aware. It's tough, tough, tough. It's tough to get to the playoffs. It's tough to get the championship game. It's tough to even get the Super Bowl. To win it is, is, is a bitch. But understand this, too. He's proved that he can get you in the dance, and that's all you need to see. You know what? And they've done a heck of a job drafting. They've done a heck of a job signing free agents and keeping their own. It, it's, you know, top five organization in the NFL every year, in my opinion, in the last three or four years, or since Kyle's been there, 100%. Right. 
Scott, I try to tell him, you know, John Elway, they <laughs> said, couldn't win the big one until he won the big Andy one. Reed. Andy Reid yeah. in Philadelphia. Me. Hey, yeah. I was in Green Bay, and we lost in San Diego in the Super Bowl, and he did his little flip and went in the end zone. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. I lost the ring for that. Son of a gun. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, and, and that's the thing. I mean, Kyle Shanahan's one of the youngest coaches in the league. He's been to the NFC Championship three out of the last four years, the Super Bowl once. It's like... I tell my partner, yeah. you can't win the Super Bowl <laughs> unless you knock on the door uh, as much as you possibly can. 100%. <laughs> All you can do is knock. All you got to do is put yourself in a situation, which they have each year, to, to get in the dance and then start knocking and see when, when are you going to break through. And all of a sudden you break through. We could, when I was in Green Bay, we could not beat the Cowboys. They had Aikman, Irvin, Emma Smith, all that stuff. Two years in a row we lost in the playoffs, second round and third round, to Dallas. And we deserved to lose. And Brett was, you know, a three-time MVP and all that as a quarterback and all that in Green Bay. But all of a sudden, we, we, we broke through that door. We took off. We went back-to-back Super Bowls. We lost one, won one, but went to back-to-back ones. Mm. And it was like, now we expect it. Now it's just like, well, yeah, the hell with the Cowboys. The Cowboys don't matter anymore. They're done. It's us. You know, and it's, it's unique how it works. And a lot of it, just like self-confidence and it's just like players, like, well, we're not going to lose to this team again. We're not going to wow. lose this round of the playoffs. It's just, it's, it's unique, but it, it starts up top, you know, and not saying the GM or the president or the ownership, but it starts at the head coach and it starts at the coordinators and it starts at the position coaches and just instilling that belief that no matter what, we're not going to lose. And you get the right kind of characters in your building, in the locker room, that they don't know anything but winning. Now, now you've got something strong, and and that's what the 49ers have right now. They have confident, good football players that expect to win every Sunday. Nope. I've been on teams where we just hoped we can show up and have 45 that are healthy to play on, be active on Sunday. <laughs> you know, right. they're, they're, they're cutting guys, trading guys, letting guys go. They're good football players. They'll be on other teams, and that shows a good organization, really <laughs> good throughout the organization, really good. Scott, you guys, man, you guys are rubbing off on me because I'm sitting here and I don't want to put you on the spot. Or if uh, this is not applied to the Niners, but let's just say in a three year window, because I'm thinking about McVeigh, would you take your team making the playoffs three years in a row or winning the Super Bowl one year and missing out on the playoffs the other two? I know that's kind of. No, good question. Very good question. You got to win the chip, bud. Okay. That's where you get measured right. by. I got everybody you. gets everybody get measured by championships, not by playoffs, by championships. Everybody. I love it. I love it. I love it. Here's the thing. <laughs> Here's the thing, Scott. So I looked Scott. at I looked at Andy Reid in Philly over a five year period. He played in they, the Eagles played in twelve playoff games in a five year period. Man. Yep. And I'm I look at that and I'm like, that's that's incredible. My partner says, Yeah, couldn't get it done. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> So that's, but, 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 but now he has. Yeah, he, now he's a genius, God. Scott. I'm calling him a genius now. <laughs> I know Andy very well. I was with Andy in Green Bay. and he, Great uh, coach. Great offensive mind. Great quarterback coach. Phenomenal quarterback coach. But, yeah, no, no. And, and it, it, I could tell you story after story about him not being hired as a head coach there. But I won't get into that. But good coaches are good coaches. And if you, if you have a winning record, that's hard to do in the NFL. Uh, with injuries – with changes every year, with players holding now, with whatever, trade requests, all the stuff that's going on now, a good coach keeps their guys together. And I saw Mike Holmgren do it. Mm. I'm seeing Andy Reid do it, and I think Kyle is the exact same. I think he, not just offensively a genius, play caller, quarterback guy, but he's an overall leader. And that starts, you know, and John, I love the death. Lynch, great guy, great GM, highly intelligent, and see the whole picture and understand it. Kyle's a coach. And to be a coach, you, you need to see the whole picture, but you need to identify with the players. And you got to get the trust of the players mm. and the belief of the players. And he has that. And that's why well, I think it's, like I said, a great organization. And it starts up top, the ownership. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. they're good people, phenomenal people. Not just have money and that stuff, but just really good, genuine, inside their body people. Mm. You know, you can talk to about things in life, and they're right. there for you. You know, and that's that's unique in the NFL. Very, very unique. Hey, Scott, thank you Great so stuff, much, man. man. Really appreciate it. You might not remember, but I uh, I actually watched the game with you once. The Raiders played the uh, Cleveland Browns. Uh, I'm a buddy of Pete Schaefer's, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
He and, told uh, me. He told me. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, I tell you what, I'll, I'll, that was a big time privilege. I remember. I remember you saying, "Hey, check out Nick Chubb's thighs." <laughs> <laughs> and you said, "This guy's going to be an unbelievable running back." So you got that one right for <laughs> sure, man. <laughs> Second round pick. I've been lucky to be in, in involved in two drafts. One was drafting Frank Gore and one drafting Nick Chubb. And I think both are going to end up being the Hall of Famers. I think both of them. And that's, that's unique and it's special. And the thing about it, it's unique and special about it. It's not just the football player. It's the person. It's the it factor. It's what's in their freaking soul and heart. And the, these guys are legit. What you see is what you get every single day. And I respect that as a GM and know my football players. Scott, thank you so much for joining us, man. You hung on the line for a while. I really appreciate thanks, your time, and uh, good luck to you, and uh, thanks for uh, checking in, man. Yeah, thank you guys very much. And just, just know this. If you ever talk about Frank Gore, call me anytime. Okay. There you go. 